Welcome to self harming. Huh? Welcome to self harming. Hey, welcome to self harming. We glad you here today. Another AMA. Ask me anything. Super chat is cool if you wanna pay to play. Like and subscribe, that's what we really appreciate. Let me introduce you to the tear down king. Mike McNutt, it ask your questions, he'll answer anything. ATM, you know where them put them graphics on the screen. Glad you tapped in now, stay tapped in for the team. Hey, everything is posted. Go follow the socials. South Harmon FF tag is it, we get noticed. Welcome to South Harmon, we glad you here today. Huh? Welcome to South Harmon, we glad you here today. Another AMA. Welcome to South Harmon, we glad you here today. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Wednesday night, AMA. We are back in the building. It's nuts, Adam. Like, I just happened to be perusing on Twitter, right? Had to make sure the link was out. Everybody got it. There's yeah. like 37 different fucking shows streaming on Wednesday nights. So, listen, if you hear watching us live, foregoing the 36 others that are out there, uh, thank you. Jesus. <laughs> Like, yeah. God damn. I mean, you know, the longer it goes, Mike, there there is no shortages of place to uh you know spend your time watching stuff, right? Consuming. No sir. No sir. No Speaking sir. of you consuming, the, Mike, I mean What you got on there? What do you got on you got that pitch jersey on again? It's time, man. Like if there was ever a time to free pits, I, I, I would hope it's now. Like what if he gives up the number to, to well, Kirk? Are you gonna change it on the back to you know what? Say Mike, I wasn't gonna do it this early, but I think it's a perfect time. Um everybody I'm going a little M M&M and M today. Um, I'm cleaning out my closet, Mike. Uh, I got a you whole want? a whole slew, and this is probably going to end up going with it because of the number change. But I'm still going to rock the eight. So what do you, what do you, what do you want to start with here? All right. How about a Ooh, freshly minted Eric Armstead? Right. Well, Just signed it. <laughs> Just signed it. They cut his ass, right? Uh, <laughs> R.I.P. That one's at least that one's signed, so I'll probably keep it around. But that's fair. And, and you met him in person too, right? Like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still special I'll, stuff. Yep. Yeah, I probably still will get a chance to meet him again. Uh, he is brother in laws with one of my best friends, Saquon Barkley, buddy. Let's uh, uh, you know. Now you gotta make that green, green and white. Let's uh, as a matter of fact, Mike. You know why not? <laughs> Kelly, Kelly Green. There How you about go. About that right there. Right, there you go. Just dye it. <laughs> just, I mean that. Just dye it. You know what? If I put like the little eagle over here, right? There's literally nothing on this jersey other than this New York Giant. So. Just color that all green. I like it. This yeah, one maybe yeah, yeah. we could work with, right? Um, Joe Mixon? Who? Uh, Joe Mixon? I, ca- I can't help you with that one, man. I don't know how to turn that into a Texans jersey. How about uh, Josh Jacobs? Can't turn that one into a Packers jersey either. But they've been around for forever, There's... so they might have just had like a, a black and gray like. <laughs> color a scheme at what time there, there, there's other ones here um i have a whole closet still mike to get through because the, they're a little older but these ones are more in the last year or two and uh I'll tell you what man I'm, I'm about as deadly as it gets when it comes to jerseys right anymore yeah you like know? i'm still waiting for you to buy a brock purdy jersey buddy like, when <laughs> well, you gonna do me a solid how about this one yeah you, see i need you to buy me a brock purdy jersey i mean that that one happened that really got out of hand fast. Can you get a Dak jersey while you're at it? <clears throat> Michael Parsons? See, here's the thing, Mike. <clears throat> I, when it comes to like that taboo type stuff, I don't think you can do it like um like, you know, I think I think they're going to know that you're fucking around, right? It's got to be sincere. That's right. I don't think I it works you. if you're if you're like you know trying to trick the gods. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> the cursed gods would know exactly what <laughs> they're you're gonna know. They're almost yeah. going to strike you down worse, right? I love um, it. All right, let's talk oh, about Saquon gonna, though. It's been a rough week. Oh, sixty six. Uh, fifty. Fifty. Okay. Fifty. Have you done a fifty Many before? Men. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Damn, that doesn't. We're that building does, up. That's a not terrible as exciting. Habit. No, I'm not going to die like last. Many men wish death upon me. Yeah. This one says it tastes like Skittles. They're <laughs> lying. It does taste like Skittles. Mike, can I can I tell you though? I, I'm in particular with quads and with Jacobs. Like, I, I think the running back position as a whole is just kind of in a, in a bad spot. Let's just call it what it is, right? There's not much they what can do. do. Uh, the running back position, like as a whole in the NFL, is not like as far as the amount of money they're going to get. Yeah, their their shelf life, their money. It's 
relative to the players that are like become household names, they are going to have the shortest career typically and oh, not make the most money, right? And sure. there's not much what, they can do did, about it. Darnell Mooney's getting paid like the same that Saquon got. Well, the, and to my point, because th- there's nothing they can do as, as at least as far as a unit goes. I think for that, and th- it's no. the NFL just has already spoke where they think the position is valued. But at least for guys like Quads and Jacobs, we're we're two of the better running backs in the league. Saquon especially. You you franchise tag us. You know what? Listen, I, I played by the rules, but now I'm going to the rival squad. Like. Fuck y'all! I'm I'm gonna at least do this right and uh, yeah, I'm out. Yep. I I mean, say what you want. I kind of I kind of signed for it, man. Like, th- I think it would have been a a bad thing for the position had they signed with their uh, incoming team. You know, if had they had he stayed well, in the, in Vegas and had he, he stayed in uh, the, for the Giants. So you kind of had a nice perfect storm here, at least for the running backs. Um, you had a great free agent class. Coupled yep. with a, I think, yep. ob- objectionably, like we can say now, this rookie class is very uninspiring, even for NFL teams, right? If they liked the rookie class and thought they were getting some values in the second, third, fourth round that could fill their starting running back need, you wouldn't be as aggressive going out day one of free agency and signing these running backs, right? Sure. So fuck that. We're good. Instead, they did the opposite, right? But you had a very good <clears throat> free agent running back class coupled with a terrible NFL draft class of running backs. And... They kind of settled on a market, right? Yeah. Like they kind of said, well, if I'm going to get 13 mil, if you think about it for like Josh Jacobs. You leave the Raiders, which has kind of a, always been a dysfunctional organization of shit, <laughs> you I know, mean, at least in our lifetimes. By, by, by kind of, we mean, yeah, not always. Like it's been, it's been rough for those guys, man. We don't know what their quarterback situation is, right? It's like right now it's Gardner Minshew versus Aiden O'Connell. We know it's grim mm. currently, yeah. No one cares. You go to the Packers, which Eric and I talked about this on America's <coughs> Game. I'm actually kind of intrigued by the Josh Jacobs thing, especially if we get back to, like, 22 Josh Jacobs, motivated Josh Jacobs, not franchise tech Josh Jacobs last year. Yeah. If we get back to motivated one on an up-and-coming offense that I would imagine is going to address that offensive line in the draft and really boost that up, Jordan Love and those receivers, fucking Josh Jacobs set himself up for a nice year. Right? Yeah, I mean, definitely Saquon, the situation Sa- can't be much worse than than Saquon. The, on the other hand, goes from the worst offensive line probably we, we've seen in a long time to one of the best we've seen in a long time. Sure. And listen, man, Saquon had been rumored to the Eagles way back when he was still a prospect in, at Penn State, right? Like Penn State Philly connection is always strong. So sure. I think I think it is hard. He's always wanted to play in Philly, man. He's coming home. I mean, LeBron James. <laughs> I mean, What's when up? you. When you lose, you know, Kelsey, and you're still talking about how this offensive line is one of the best out there, like, oh, gives you a sure. little bit of an understanding of uh, how different this whole line's built. And I think, don't, don't, don't get it twisted either. Kelsey's, uh, you know, probably the GOAT. You don't, re- you don't just replace him, like, no, for what no, it's no. worth, just to make sure that people aren't but, misconstruing but Cam, that. Cam Jurgens is no slouch. He's been playing guard because Kelsey's been in, right? Sure. He got a lot of run last year. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to be the one taking over at center now. Uh, you Dickerson, think. Dickerson was a center in college. They just paid him a fuck ton of money. Uh, he has molded himself into one of the best guards in the league. So maybe he takes over at center. I don't really know how that's going to shake out, but um, I'm going to go with Cam Jurgens at center. And I wouldn't even rule out the fact, man, uh, Eagles just addressed running back. We're good at wide receiver, quarterback. Uh, they did some uh, stuff to address the edge, right, bringing in Bryce Huff. Uh, they addressed the safeties. We don't really pay linebackers, so maybe, you know, they get one in the third round or something like that in the draft, but they don't have a whole lot of needs, Adam. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if, like, uh, JPJ, kid out of Oregon, center, best center in this draft, that's their pick in the 20s, right? Like, <laughs> why not? Leave I mean, Jurgens at guard. We're going to put in a position to, center. And... They're in a position to kind of, like, almost go BPA. They just, you know, obviously their defense, they'd like to see better than how it finished last year, but there's. They have they have so much uh, overall talent, and for them to all still have all their picks with this team, it's crazy, man. I mean, it's just yeah. it's honestly just crazy. When I think about DeAndre Swift's role there last year, Mike, uh, at least mm-hmm. early on, it was like, man, they they wanted to use this guy early and often. Oh, first week we had our our scares, right, and then uh, that went to bed. DeAndre Swift took over the workload, but I think Saquon is in a unbelievable situation. The only question I think people have or if they don't let me bring it up is 
Where are you at with uh, like his red zone touchdown upside with the Jalen Hurts situation as far as him just being such a good uh, scorer in, in those, inside the five-yard line? Kelsey was a huge part of that touch push, right? For sure. So don't get that part twisted. I mean, Jalen Hurts is a big part. Obviously, they kind of had it down, but Kelsey's a huge part, man. That guy just got low and just hammered the piss out of you. So losing Couldn't him, do I don't know. It. I don't know how they replace that. You know, even if it's a rookie or Jurgens or whatever. Like I'm sure they probably have a plan in place, but I imagine that's going to take a step back. And another thing, man. Like how many times are you going to keep putting your quarterback in harm's way, like Hurts? Right now, he yeah. didn't get hurt on that play, right, Adam? Sure. But Listen, man, you paid this guy a shit ton of money, and you saw how his play really dipped when he did suffer that knee injury, and he just didn't quite look right, didn't look the same. Team faltered down the stretch. So, By no means did he look the same, no. If they're, if they're smart, man, if you're Kellen Moore, you're going like, yeah, we're going to leave it in our bag because, yes, it's effective at times, but maybe we limit that a little bit more. We just paid a running back 13 mil. <laughs> maybe we just hand the fucking football to Saquon a little bit more. So <laughs> we'll see how it shakes out. Even if he's just DeAndre Swift plus, that's still pretty good for fantasy. Yeah, I, I just wanted to like kind of give context because, Mike, for example, DeAndre Swift, we would say, had his career year last year, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, pretty easy. Mike, he, he in every year prior had at least that many rushing touchdowns. Yeah. And we said he was he was we said he was disappointment. Just to give you an idea of how ridiculous right. the red zone efficiency was with the the tush push and Jalen Hurts and. DeAndre Swift only had five rushing touchdowns. They, they used an awful lot of fucking Kenneth Gainwell in the red zone too, which was disgusting. I don't think he had Not many touchdowns either, so it was just poor usage of uh, backs yeah. in general. But I, I think Saquon has an incredibly high ceiling. I think the only thing would be, you know, if the touchdowns can be that's like fine. super super high end. That's the only that's the only possible. This, this is where I'm it. going like like fizzle, man. Like this could be one of the only players I just draft with my fucking heart. Like, you're going to have to probably take one out of my cold, dead fucking hands, boys. I was going to say, I feel like for you it's a, a win-win. Like, you and I have been <laughs> running back guys for a long time, Saquon guys for forever. It's not fair, man. Mike just gets them for free. Like, stop it. Get it out of here. <clears throat> DeAndre Swift. Quickly, we'll get through some of these here. DeAndre Swift might go into Chicago. Where are you at with this? Obviously, the situation nowhere near the, the Philadelphia Eagles. It's a little bit of a loss, but, you know, gains a role. He doesn't have to compete with, like you mentioned, Jalen Hurts, because it is a negative you bring up a little bit, just the way the Philly sure. runs their offense. He doesn't have to compete with uh, Kenneth Gainwell, right? I think Roshan's fine, but he's more of like a third down guy. So this is uh, the DeAndre Swift show. But I'll still knock him down a few spots in my rankings. Obviously, the Bears are not Philadelphia. Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, overall, not the – I wouldn't say a win. Definitely not a win. It's probably a loss, just real. You have to you have to call it a loss. I think overall, though, it might be perception-wise less of a loss, I think, than people really want to give it credit for. I think the offense is, as a whole is not going to be nearly as good. We'll see, though. I mean, they get a guy like Caleb Williams in there. I think a lot of checkdowns could be had with a guy like him, right? I think maybe Possibly. the offense actually is, um, you know, decent as far as last year it, was, it got better. But I think there's still room for improvement. I, I think that he's obviously not going to be in a ton of scoring situations, but I think there could be a lot of uh, passing upside, uh, pass catching upside for him in this in this offense. He's fine. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm not going to do the same thing we did with Miles Sanders last year with a lot of these guys, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't really give a fuck about their contract, right? Oh, they paid him sure. eight mil, nine mil doesn't really give a <laughs> shit. I think it's a little bit of a net negative. Like I had him a little bit higher. I've always been a fan of his game, but obviously going from Philly to Chicago. I don't really know, to your point, though, Adam, I really don't know how, if it is uh, Caleb Williams, which let's keep riding that because we haven't been told otherwise, right? I don't want people to come after me saying Justin Fields is going to be there, but if it is him, I don't know if he's going to be the check down guy, right? I don't really know how that's going to work out, how much he's going to throw to running backs. He didn't do it a whole lot at USC right off the bat. Sure. And, we we knocked Marshawn Lloyd for that, and then you see at the Senior Bowl and then at the Combine, like, he looks pretty fucking good catching the football. <laughs> so why didn't you utilize him? And instead, Caleb liked to run in circles and zigzag and do all this other shit. So, Yeah, I mean, I mean, I just look at this year like uh, pretty pretty uh, friendly for a quarterback as far as checking it down. A guy like Jalen Hurts really had never done it before, and you saw him throw it to DeAndre oh, yeah. Swift a decent amount of time. So, Mike, what are you drinking tonight? What the F are you drinking? You know, my guilty pleasure, man. Ooh, Cayman Jack? Wow. Yeah. 
my double Bs for I those. I thought you were going to be joining me back with this here, you know, Garrison <laughs> Brothers, just like last week. We got to give that a rest, all right? <laughs> I, Mike, you were you were get, you were kind of having a good time last week. I think we bring it back. Um, we we'll, we'll save it. Special occasions, all right. special guests. We will get back to uh, some free agencies, but right now, you know, if you want to control the show, you always can. And uh, Mike, Bing Bang, we're back to it. Tyler, Ching. Tyler, <clears throat> twelve team Superflex. Start 11. It's a half-point tight end premium. We got Allen Burrow. Love to hear that. Ramondre, and then a bunch of backups. Okay. Chase, A.J. Brown, Romeo Dubs, uh, Zay Jones, Samuel. Is that Debo Samuel? Or Cur- I think listening this late is a Curtis. Yeah. Our guy Curtis Samuel. Uh, Musgrave, 106, 206, 210. Just traded Barkley for 25 first, 210, 405 thoughts. I'm probably not doing that, but that's me. Right. The the process play probably says do it, Adam. Right? Well, Mike, here's the thing. 405. Honest I mean, opinion. Fuck let that. Me, let me just say where I think that this one is, while I kind of agree with the process in general, I think it's, okay, this 25 class as a whole, we'll see. Like a 25 first should be able to buy you what you would need to in season. Um, if you have other 25s as well, like if you got two or three especially, you can kind of push your way around to buying some assets. But – just think a single 25 first. And then the 210, the 210, you're already kind of shooting your shot if you were to make that pick on does it matter at all this year, right? And then the 405 is absolutely fucking, I, listen, yeah, sure, you could hit a tank deal or some shit, but like it's overall meaningless in a deal like this for me. So process, I think overall says, yeah, probably take the two for one. But certain situations, I would be okay holding or saying you need to pay up a better second or something a little more. Um, for a guy like Saquon after he just got a landing spot like this in Philly too. Teams built to compete. I'm probably not dealing with them. Right. And we now, just did the rookie rookie warp, which got released. Shout out Cooper for that last night. Yep. Forty chess live. Go check that out. But uh I walked away from there going like those back end seconds. Even if I like this class, Adam, which I do, more than likely that's a dog shit player that doesn't matter. And the four ten sure as fuck doesn't matter. That that's kind of where I'm saying like here while the process typically you would think says first and a second, just take it. I feel like I would a random 25 first Mike or Saquon. I don't think you have to make that deal. I think you could, I don't think you have to by any means. And then uh, the rest of this, it doesn't really make me, you know, super, super excited to feel like all these pluses are, are super meaningful. So, um, I'm fine with it. I don't think it was like a, uh, Holy crap. You got to smash this offer though. Type thing. Right. No. No, if I'm if I'm with my heart, it's definitely no. I tell that guy to piss off. The only thing too is like obviously we've seen with quads. Well we mentioned this a couple years ago, Mike. if quads gets hurt, which we've seen before happen, that, that asset craters. So um it does. that's that's where the process play could give you more protection. Um It does. Nathan Nathan says that's gross, dude. Yeah, I mean listen, what do you want from me? I'm just putting up I'm sorry. There's shit all over the screen. If that's the grossest thing you're looking at, I don't know what to tell you. You know. <laughs> Appreciate the super chat. I, can, I can't. Yeah, do Tyler. It. I, I, I I wouldn't say like I think I think this one's it's probably fifty fifty. I think it's fifty right. fifty. Like you you could yeah. make it. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, start eleven is the other thing though, Mike. Like start eleven, man. I like I like to have bodies in the start eleven league. Not future randoms. I mean, I don't mind future randoms, but like. In a start eleven league, sometimes a future first, you have to wait until the right time to actually buy a a player. That's Someone's fair. really willing to trade away players for just straight up picks. Here's what I'm looking at with this team. I don't know currently if you throw the 106 and 206 in. Let's even say those are decent players. So let's say 106, you get a Roma Dunze. 206, mm-hmm. you get one of the running backs in this class. You, you happen to hit a guy that gets a starting role. I don't even know if he becomes anything. Insert that into this team. Start 11, man, I don't know that this team's ready to compete even there. Now, the quarterbacks are juiced, but Chase A.J. Brown, and then we'll see what we get out of, you know, a guy like Rome, and then, I mean, it's okay. It's it, it, This is not like a lock to make the playoffs, I guess, is the thing. So why, why I say I, I, it's okay to make this trade is because if you're not really ready to go, you might want to start preparing for, um, like, retooling for next year would be my only thing. Just be ready to say fuck this. <laughs> you, you you're a little more flexible to go either way, right? That 25 first, you could eventually buy a player if you're ready to go for the playoffs, but That's you're fair. a little more flexible. Yeah. That's the only thing I can make the case for. Yep, I get behind that one. 
I say it's it's more 50-50, but I just sat here and talked glowingly about Saquon. <laughs> oh, Mike, and here we go. 16 fantasy points per game behind that terrible Giants offensive line. This is how I feel. Uh, this is after he left his first auction. Um, so Mike's talked about how you can screw up an auction. I don't think he screwed this auction up, by the way. I just don't no. think it's like a – Guaranteed lock to make the playoffs. It's some, there's some very good assets on this team, though. I mean, well, you you get you walk away with Allen Burrow and Chase and AJ Brown immediately. That's already four in a top twenty four players and at the right positions. So I like it in a lineup. <laughs> yeah, in a lineup. Yeah, I like it. Um, all right. L- let me just ask real quick, Mike. Then uh, let's talk Cousins briefly. Um, Kirko Chains. What, where, where are you at with, obviously, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson? Uh, th- this feels like in the offseason everything we were hoping for, honestly, if I'm keeping it real for the Falcons as a whole. I'm, one, let me just say the, the contract's fucking horrible. <laughs> but Atlanta was so desperate that they did it. Uh, I kind of envisioned Kirk like going back on a sweetheart deal maybe to Minnesota, or if he went somewhere else, it'd be like a two-year deal. Jesus Christ, they gave him a fuck ton of money. Uh, so good for him for getting the bag, man. He's got the greatest agent in the world. He's a fine player, uh, but Minnesota can never get it done with him. Uh, for NFL purposes, I don't know if Atlanta, the division's kind of shit, so maybe sure. they actually make a little noise, but probably get bounced in the playoffs if they do make it. Fantasy-wise, though, I'm fucking elated. Not just for Kirk. Uh, Kirk gets some weapons. He had weapons, though. He had Addison and Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson. Like He was fine there. Yeah. Kind of got the same, just slightly less upgrade at running back, obviously. Uh, but for Drake London, fuck yes, man. I'm I'm elated for it. Uh, Darnell Mooney signing with him. Diet Jordan Addison, maybe. Maybe. Just 60% Jordan Addison. Kirk had pretty good rapport with him, just throwing the ball down the field to him early in the year. So uh, I'm elated for London. And, and unfortunately, Adam... You and I have been hot and cold on Kyle Pitts back and forth. It just feels like forever, and God damn it, I'm fucking back in. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say I was waiting. I was waiting. It sounded like you were setting me up to tell me you're not you're not in, and I was like, really? Okay, all right, good. I'm Glad to hear back. it. Well, I mean, Mike, fucking it's fucking horrible. I'm ready well, to be hurt again. I mean, let's just call it what it is. Uh, Kirk Cousins is exactly what you want for like passing friendly weapons and and for a guy like Kyle Pitts is we've seen Kirk Cousins be very meaningful and helpful for tight end position in general so um yeah you think about Kyle Pitts in his rookie season it was Matt Ryan and you could Mike that old version of Matt Ryan and this old version of Kirk Cousins I'm kind of you know hopefully a little better but that's the type of shit you want and and think Kyle Pitts didn't score any touchdowns in that season really uh one right so he's gonna get some I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I think Pitts, all of a sudden, you could see a totally different year for him. Uh, I'm going to probably do something stupid with uh, Drake London, though. <laughs> how, how so? To what degree? So I had him comfortably. You know, we got this giant tier of receivers where we're all like, yes. He's still going to be in that tier. Oh, you put him in tier two? No, he'll still be in tier three. Okay, okay. But I lead off tier three with a banger and a personal favorite, Michael Pittman Jr., and I have no reason to not put Drake London right next to him. If not ahead of him, there's no way. You, I bet you right now, if you polled Fizzle, I'll tell you what, on the uh, the socials, drop it right now. Let's get a poll. Michael Pittman, Drake London. I bet you. I bet you it would be in favor of London. Just the community perception, especially coming off of this news right now. I would imagine, mm-hmm. right? To your point, like I, I don't disagree with your sentiment. I just think that the community is going to be so crazy for London. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. I just mean uh, Drizzy was probably more in that like 15 to 18 kind of range before this yeah we and i already had a little bit built in of a quarterback <clears throat> upgrade this is just sure. like, fuck all right we're in let's go mike can i tell you what <clears throat> you you got to go back a ways okay but um you know what really kind of excites me about this is you go back to the years where this is going back a ways the the biggest outlier probably at the tight end position jordan reed took off you know, you know who was quarterback mm-hmm. in that thing kirk o james kirk cousins Jordan Reed tight end like one. That. Jordan Reed tight end one. Some of those like years, that. Mike. I'm a. Uh... I always forget too. Who was the? Uh... So you remember right after Tim Tebow, right? He had Jordan Reed. He played quarterback at Florida for a while. 
They had another guy who played quarterback, too, and both of them ended up moving to tight end. Jordan Reed, and I forget who the other guy was. If you're in the chat, help me out. Like those those Gator teams right after Tim Tebow because they tried to use Jordan Reed as that like help. Tim Tebow replacement. Help us out. Didn't uh, work. I got Mike. I, I can't even get anywhere near through free agency. Uh, we got just super chats piling up. So let's let's go ahead. Let's do it. You know do why it. not? Uh, let's see. Can I get it? Can I get a little bit of maybe? Here we go. All right. Nailed it. On that team was offered a uh, was offered Reed a twenty five first and second for AJ Brown. Thoughts no. on that one? No. No, oh, thank you. Kind of with you. If I could get something in this class in jo- in Jaden Reed, I'd be much more inclined with that. But yep, 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 yep. I'm with you. No. If you take no, if you no, no offense to Jaden Reed, but we're talking a start <laughs> eleven lineup league. Like, well, because he, here's the thing: if you make this trade, Tyler, if you were to make this trade, you have everything we talk, everything I was talking about theoretically. You've basically picked your direction. Like you're not going to probably be competing with just Jaden Reed and Jamar Chase and the rest of the receivers you had in this. So you're kind of really making a push to the bottom already. I probably would hold. I, I like Jaden Reed a lot too, but I've so also been hurt. I've been hurt by Jahan Dotson, and you know, if I got to comp players to players, there's your comp. Like I just. I don't want to do it again. Mike, I, to- I told you it's... <laughs> I just don't want to do it again. There's a BDGE video I made where I, t- I talked pretty lengthy for a guy that I said I would not draft in the sixth round. And I I, mean, I had to you know spell my love out for the guy. I'm, I'm a big Jaden Reed fan, but then I had to tell the real. It's like, right now this dude, if he does not pick up his snap share percentage in a decent way, like he is in... Speaking of the receivers, he has Curtis Samuel territory. Like just... You're not you're not gonna see the type of efficiency that he had on that type of snap share, realistically. And there, there's all there's too many weapons in Green Bay for me to say for sure he's gonna get a full time role. So um, yeah, I'm kind of I have Jaden Reed shares, Mike, but I'm from AJ Brown to Jaden Reed to me is a big drop. Uh, I'd probably like value wise, it's not bad, but I don't think I would do it with the team you have right now. Yep. All right, Nathan, I know he sucks now. But what are you adding on top of 212 to get Hurts startup? I think that was a kind of sent, like a nice little jab to the community that they, he sucks now. What are you adding on top of the 212 to get to Hurts in a startup, Mike? 12 team super flex, best ball, start 11. Heavy quarterback and wide receiver warp. Running backs and tight ends don't matter. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I assume he's got the 312, third round reversal. Yeah, 312. What if it was 301 even? That one. Yeah, I don't give a shit. If I had two picks in the second round, I'd send both of them. Mm-hmm. If I had the 110, 111, I'd send that fucker as well. Well, let's say right here it's the one, it's the the 112, the 212. Easily. I mean, in his scenario though, it's most likely he's got the, the 101, the 312, and the 401. So yeah, uh, all yeah. the above. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but if this is the 101 and the 212, there's I'm not the 101, obviously. It's, you're good. but uh, Start 11 best ball. It's not super deep where quarterbacks don't get super devalued, and Jalen Hurts is one of the few quarterback hammers that doesn't really matter if we play zone coverage or not. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, here, here's the way I would answer the question. If this 212, if at this point, Mike, I'm out of the quarterback ranges, which are like Kyler Murray, I think, if, I'm, if Kyler's gone and you're at this 212 spot, I'm very comfortable sending this 212 and I'd say any non top 10 quarterback in the next, like basically any top 25, top 35 dynasty asset, those two pieces easily. So yeah, another second round, if you had it, as long as it wasn't one of those quarterback options where I'm like, ah, I don't want to consolidate. I'd be fine with it. Yep. Yep. Uh, he said he got Allen at the one on one. So yeah, fuck yeah. that dude. Just about. You know, I Mike would do uh, unspeakable things to get the uh, Allen Hurts yeah. combo here. I, I so let, let's kidney. just let's just talk through away. let's just talk through some scenarios. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. No, never mind. This is tight end. I went. I, it, it cued me up for tight end heavy. Like I was like, wait a second. Like all there of a sudden, keep trade cuts initial pool was all the way juiced to no. tight end. I'm like, what are we doing? It just remembers you. It's learning. Yeah. So th- there you go. It's like Skynet. It's becoming aware. It's scary. Um, all right, so right now, Mike, let's say Chris Olave <laughs> in the 212. So the 212 yeah. right now in, in startups is like, uh, what is that probably? Let's, let's just pull it up. Don't care. 
It could be Kyler Murray for all I give a shit. Ky- you would do Kyler and Chris Olave to go get him? Yep. Okay, it's A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown and Chris Olave. Yep. You're in? No question. Yep. I, I guess the only thing I would say there is with the – you say uh, wide receiver warps really high. Like, how close is it to quarterbacks would be the only way I would even – I'm with you. Probably 90% of leagues I would be willing to send that to those two receivers for uh, – for Jalen Hurts, and the other reason is because in best ball start eleven, Mike, I th- I feel like I can just hit you with a bunch of back end receivers, dudes. right? Like I can just bunch of dudes. Let me pile on Josh Downs, Calvin Ridley, going to a place yeah. with no one can throw the football. You know all this, whatever. Fucking, let me just me, give me some, give me all of it. Give man. me some Gabe Davis in best ball. Bam. Can I get it? You know what, Mike? As much as I'm not a fan of of a lot of it, like. Give me shit. Give me Jerry Judy. Give me just give me a bunch of the dudes at this range. Give me Jerry Judy in baseball. Right? Yeah. Yep. I'm with you. I will do unspeakable things. I don't. To get the top three I don't know. I don't know if that uh if that's like reasonable uh, or if that can get done, Nathan. But I think I'd try something like that first. Um, see if that can get you get, get you in the combo at minimum. Nailed it. Love it. Thanks for super chat. By a, the way. Yeah. Give us a follow up if. Uh, Best ball strategy question for a tanking team. Oh, well, I mean, you're in the right place for that. Nailed it. I've been told that that's Good all start. I can do in best ball. That is all you can do. I know. Other that's than... why. That's why I'm saying he's in the right place. Um, <laughs> when, when stanking in best ball. I love this, man. This is, Devin, thank you. When adding. Yeah, when, when ATMing your way to the bottom. Is it ideal to maintain proper roster construction, or would you want to hold backup RBs, QBs? Listen, it it is not important at all your roster construction. Com- literally, like if I I will go oh, completely away it. from, I will go opposite of roster construction on purpose if that's what I need to. Like it's, yeah. Roster construction goes completely out the window in a rebuild if you're fully committed to the rebuild. Now the only the only uh, exception would be if you didn't put the prior in here. Like if you're not truly trying to stink, if you're just trying to see what happens, you want to probably stay closer to roster construction. So then you don't have to reassemble an entire team mid season. Um, but if you're if you're just trying to plummet to the bottom, fuck, get rid of all of it. <laughs> get rid of all of it, man. If you're going full dog shit mode and you don't have quarterbacks, you know that are safe, solid investments. Like say you got a, a Kirk Cousins, a Derek Carr, an Aaron Rodgers. I send them motherfuckers away, and I just roll with backups <laughs> every single week, making my <laughs> starting lineup. And then as soon as they get a job, it's like any third you can have them, <laughs> take them, please get them off my team. I don't want points. Devin, there was a uh, my my worst stanking in best ball or tanking job. I at one point like I went over over to the Dynasty Nerds page and just they had the the chart of the players and assets and I wanted the whole thing gone. So I just made it a I made a conscious choice to get rid of them all. And uh, <laughs> there was literally no value in players on that team. So it it doesn't matter. Now just just know that the further from roster construction you probably get, um, it may take longer to get it back to contention but if you just pile you're just piling up assets and honestly trying to not score points so for example like mike says if you just i don't have good quarterbacks you literally don't have quarterbacks to go into those spots good luck winning those games like (laughs) even if you have a bunch of receivers pop off one week you're gonna have a hard time winning versus a real team I think my best like tanky job was in shit four right just because i didn't have quarterbacks in the two quarterback league but I had I have Chase and Jefferson and and uh, C D Lamb on the team. It's like you got the three greatest wide receivers ever known to man. Doesn't matter. His team's still dead last. Welcome right. to the one on one. Same thing with running backs. If you ever get some of these guys that get a spot start opportunity, boom, put them on the block, get them off your team, get that points off. Fuck, I'll flat out cut them like the day before the game too. If nobody wants to trade goodness, them. <laughs> that now that you want to talk about waking the league up? Holy crap. That would be wild. You just you just put a message in the chat. He is going to be cut in the next thirty minutes. Best offers only. <laughs> Let's do it. Otherwise, I'm going to cut him as soon as Mike, he locks. <laughs> Mike likes to just cause ruckus. People just getting angry. You imagine if like a, a running back that's about to start just got cut right before the games. <laughs> Fuck yeah, buddy. Mike is super chatting. Mike, ten Let's team go, Mike. super uh, ten team super flex start ten. Mike's favorite format half PPR no tight end premium. Holy crap, man! Ten teams. Half PPR, no tight end premium. Goodness. Would you consider moving the 102 for Bijan, Gibbs, or Brees if you're stacked at receiver and already have two elite quarterbacks? Assume running backs are mid at best. See, this is the thing, right? If you told me it's 12 team, I tell you no, no chance. 10 team, is, ten, 10 team changes that completely for sure. 
you and I found out the hard way last trade show doing that warp chart on the ten team league. Like, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah, the the, the wide receivers are the quarterbacks, really, right? Now I'm just going off of I don't know the league, I don't know the warp chart, but I can imagine. <laughs> hey, Mike, you know what? Hit us with team. hit us with the league. Uh, your, your sleeper username in the league. We'll pull up the warp. I'll pull up warp right now. I would just imagine that uh, running backs probably rank pretty high on that list. Pretty pretty high. So yes, <laughs> yeah. in this case, surface level without knowing exactly what it is. Best guess I have. Yes, yes, I think I would be very comfortable doing that. Mike, I'm basically having a conversation right now, and just think about it this way. Like, for yourself, in this format, Malik Neighbors or Gibbs. That's what Gibbs. it comes down to, right? Like, yep. if, you, if you wanted Malik, I could understand it. I'd have to see the warp, but I'm just – that's the conversation I'm having basically right here. Like, I'm assuming I'm not – if you're already stacked at quarterback, you're not taking a quarterback. You're probably not getting Marv. If Marv fell, then we're having a different conversation. But if you just have it as Neighbors right now, I, I think it's one of those where, man, you could end up making the trade and maybe Gibbs doesn't smash or he gets hurt or something, and you could look back, hindsight 2020, totally different conversation. But if that's what I had to do to try to go win a title, make this team ready to rock and 10-team, Mike, I'd do it. That's where I'm at. I, I think you don't have to, you. but I would be willing to make this move. I am with you. <clears throat> all right. All right. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Uh Mike, if you if you put it in there for us later, uh, I'll pull up, I'll pull up the warp and give you a sure. more, more more defined answer. But as of we right got now, super chat that's gate, it. super chat gate. It's actually not super chat gate. I already got to the bottom of it. But apparently, last week Simon super chatted us. We didn't get to the question, hmm. so he's back. He wants Simon. his damn answer. Well, I, let me just say, Simon, if I missed it in super chat gate, I apologize sincerely. Um, I did look it up. He did actually super chat last week. <laughs> well, I'm. I apologize sincerely. A I'm sure, sweet five I'm sure you've been Canadian laughing dollars. and rolling around in that sweet. That's true. As you see, Mike really splurged. He went and got himself I some did. Cayman Jacks. Um, so. Cheers, Simon. Thank you. Couldn't afford him without that. Man, it just, I will say, look how look how happy he looks with a 50 and Cayman Jacks margaritas. We're doing He's all right. Excited. Doing all right. Um, I'm not going to let my shitty question get passed over. Let me pull up the question. All right. So, 12-team Superflex PPR. We're starting 10. It's a 1.0 tight end premium lineup league. Uh, Allen, Kyler, Deshaun, Carr, Amari, Godwin, Hollywood, McBride, 104, 109, 202, 204, 208, 301. Some shiny garbage. I love that. I like that always. J-Mo, Sharbs, Dotson, Mayer. What to do? Okay. What to do here? 12-team start 10, Mike. Full tight end premium. <clears throat> To me, like living the, you know, man of my word, living this this new A-Warp life, right? McBride's probably a piece that I'm liking to shop, first for, first and foremost. So I think the tight end premium in this league probably actually lets you get a good haul back for him. And unless Warp is where the line is, like with skill players, uh, I'm just going to let the McBride thing go. Yep. And then I try to go to uh, some guy who's got the 107, 106-ish, and I see if, like, Derek Carr and <clears throat> maybe uh, Hollywood or Derek Carr in the 109. Does that give me up a tier? He's my fourth quarterback, right? All about hoarding, right? Sometimes you can't pull that shit off. League doesn't play that game. But I go to somebody's quarterback desperate, contender. Carr in the 109 get me to the 106. So I'm really thinking I already got Allen. I got Kyler. Deshaun's going to be my good third quarterback. I got the stack with Amari. Chris Godwin's fine. Hollywood's okay in this format. McBride, I'm with you, though, and that's probably the first thing I shot. But I really want to take that 109 and get into the elite tier. right? I want to lock myself in another mm-hmm. Adunze. Right? You're going to get a yeah. nice wide receiver at the 104. Heaven forbid they let you get one of these quarterbacks, but if they do, then you can go down the QB horde route if your league, uh, you think you can get one over on them. But... Really, I want to get like a neighbors and a dunze, add it to what I already have. Shiny here, here, garbage, just let that shit go for fuck or whatever. Yeah, I think Mike, it's actually what I'm looking to do here is probably if I get neighbors at 104. All right, like let's just realistically, if I'm playing it out as it was in the draft, not necessarily just today, just in in a perfect world, I, I get neighbors at 104, and now this 109. I'm I'm doing whatever it takes to go get Rome too. You give me both those guys in this draft, and mm-hmm. I'm feeling great walking away with those guys in 
with this team that you've already assembled. I, I will say, Mike, it, it even if you add those two, though, I think I still want to add a veteran, a better veteran wide receiver uh, points per game score to this mix for here in the, start 10. Especially for the early part of the season. Exactly. These guys get acclimated. Right, yeah. right. So, um, mm. but the problem is with, with your assets, you're not probably doing both unless, Mike, unless that McBride share can net you something. So, mm-hmm. I, I think, like, let me ask you this, Mike. I, I think what I'd like to do, especially seeing that Baker got the deal, Evans got the deal, you kind of have a lot of this, uh, you know, crusties, right, you want to call them, but then pair them with some young guys. I would love to go get an Evans type and maybe even add something in trading away McBride, right? Like, Do you, do you want to roster both Evans and Godwin, though, in this scenario? I, honestly, I don't mind doing that um, personally, but – if that's not your cup of tea, there's other receivers you could, you know, that don't have to just be Mike Evans. I'm just kind of thinking off the top of the head because Baker and him just resigned, but it doesn't have to be Evans. It's somebody in that range where it's a veteran receiver, a Diggs even, right? Like something like that. Calvin Ridley, free agent news. I mean, you. I think for me, like personally, the way I have it, Diggs and Evans, I feel better about in points per game scoring than I do with Ridley in a, in a lineup league, but. Yeah, I don't have a problem. I, w- I wouldn't mind throwing him into this mix, but I want to have, I think, with a start 10 league, Mike, I'd like to have five legit receivers. And yeah. right now it depends on how you feel about Godwin. Like, I don't I don't consider Hollywood that. Um, He's got two. Yeah. And that's with if you call Godwin. One. Right. So I think you got to at least get one more of these uh, these tight end mix in there. And I, I'm okay, Mike, honestly, for the season start. If I have to have Mayer start at my tight end position, that's fine. And then, like, hit the waiver wire when I can and see what see what comes up throughout the year. Yep. And I use my shiny garbage just to get 25 liquidity so I can buy running backs. Yeah, need. if you can liquidate that shit, liquidate that sheesh. Sharps is garbage. I don't even know if he's shiny. Hey, I got to take a victory lap here. We do got to super chat another one to get to. Yeah, Jesus Christ, I, I, but I got it, one. buddy. Yeah, I already Holly. did it on America's Game, but we were doing it. Remember when everyone told me, Mike, you're wrong on Tajay Spears. There's no way. Same GMs there. They love him. <laughs> you, you know what's okay. crazy, too? Is I, I definitely You're felt like it was. I told you to. I definitely felt like it was getting out of control. Uh, I remember doing an in America. He was approaching top fifteen for fuck's sake. Yeah, I put him at eighteen and felt super uncomfortable doing it. I remember doing the AG uh, the America's Game Show with with Eric, and he was like really hyping me into trying to hype me into Taj, and I'm like, yeah, I can't go really past here. Like I'm in this this mix where I almost felt like then it was if I could sell great, but if I could, like I don't want to buy right now because okay, sure, if if free agency comes and goes and he's the guy. He'll go past where I want to pay, but the the downside is a lot worse. The other thing too, they didn't bring back Henry. They basically said, "Listen, Tony Pollard, we're kind of that's kind of what we would hope Tajay Spears could become. So let's just go get that actually, like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not ideal. Uh, far and, less and than Pollard, ideal. And Pollard was uh, was shit for most of the season, but he does got some nice splits from like what week ten or week eleven on. Like they looked a lot better. He just talked about saying. how he. Uh, he was kind of dealing with some kind of an agony injury and felt a lot more, a lot closer to 100% later on, too. Well, so. I would hope so. You watched him snap his fucking leg at the end of the uh, <laughs> 22 seasons. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, this shit was going to linger a little bit, I would imagine, but hey. <clears throat> Mike, I mean, Dang. super chat Jeez. of. Fuck, Nathan. Nathan with a barrage. Not barrage. A barrage of super chats. Holy shit. Barrage. Holy shit. Trying to do it a second time. All right. Most recently did 212, 512, 601, 712, 4 hertz. 10th, 11th, 13th, 14th, 16th, 18th, 3rd. Felt like a lot. I have Alan Hertz, 107. Wait, so you got it. Oh, this is what he ha- he actually got done um, before. And he's saying he's trying to get something similar. So, N Rob. 369 sleeper grimy degen for league name let me pull it up let's lab it laboratory time uh warp tool time both both all of the above all of it i love it too it's 369 i just i always think of uh god damn it spacing out man the 50s hitting 
by the way, Nathan, it is a 50 milli tonight. Uh, Ying Yang? Yang Twins. There you go. God damn. Right. I figured that's what it was, but I was like, hold on, he's not even getting to the point. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I understand. I got you now. Grimy like D-Gen's four, not five. He's in both of them. Yeah, four. Bunch that's of correct. Grimy not, not five. Four. All right, since, since Kuba keeps adding all these tools to it, right, we're on like a six-minute loading time. No, I'm just kidding. It's more like 30 seconds, but... 30 seconds is an eternity on the AMA when you're when you Holy got like fucking quarterback warp. <laughs> Historical warp. Oh, yeah. Uh, number one QB is right around a three, Adam. Hmm. Yikes. That is, uh, that's heavy. Heavy hitting QBs. Number two quarterback is the number two position in the entire league, by the way. You don't even get that wide receiver, that running back like CMC who bumps up above. So. <clears throat> Goodness, yeah. man. So, um, sign me the fuck up. Just send all this junk and just lock up the quarterback, get some picks later. Hope you hold serve on some of them or close to it. Interesting to me, Mike, is that uh, obviously this tight end line isn't like end-all, be-all, but it's it's better It's better than a lot of the leagues we see, frankly. Um, but that's only if you have a top one. Like you have to have a top one or I don't give a shit. At all. I still probably would A-warp you, but it's better than a lot of the lines I've seen. But that quarterback line is something ridiculous, man. Look, yeah. That QB line for the top 12 to 15 is – like if you had two top 15 City. quarterbacks, it's um, like this here. You got Allen and Hurts. Holy crap. It's going to offset a lot. Yeah, what do you got? QB, 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 QB. So you got four quarterbacks. In the top ten of multi-year warp. Now we right. add in rookie warp, which the number one rookie player also slots in there. So you know maybe part of the time that's also a quarterback, rookie quarterback who hits for sure. C.J. Stroud maybe uh, Justin Herbert back. In I mean his day. even warp per, ga- warp per game. I bet you A. Rich was pretty good last year in this format, right? Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. He was a stud. A small sample size, but shit. Game. Yeah, exactly. Small, small sample size, but a stud. Yeah. Right. Yep. I think I do this. I send the two, five, six, seven, and I get a tenth, eleven, thirteen, fourteen, six, fuck, bunch of shit back, but I'm fine with it. Way fine with it. Yeah, I mean, I know it's best ball, so you're trying to get those late picks back. Like, on, honestly, I would say this: I, if I can get them, fine. But if that's something that's going to kill the deal, I, you can drop that sixteenth and eighteenth or whatever. Like, I'll just and figure out stuff on. I'll I'll figure out yeah. that shit on the waiver wire later. Like, it's it's okay. You don't have yep. to have it back. Yes, sir. And I just stack up two studs and move on with my life. The Jalen yeah. Hurts, man. I can't believe the, the fall. The What the fuck people are doing. But, hey, to each their own. I feel like I should just rock a Hurts jersey every every week. I'm actually kind of surprised at this point. You know, we got we got Barkley sign in there. Mike, I, I love the South Harmon gear for the record. But I thought for sure this was an Eagles day. Like, get the Eagles gear out. Get the hat out. All of it. Tunchy. Tunchy time. I know McNutt has been buying Bryce Young. Yes, he has. What are you planning on doing with him mostly? Trying to flip him later or holding and hoping he turns it around? Would you buy Deontay to stack with him now? Cheers. Yeah. Uh, I love it for Deontay. Love it. I do too. I mean. They got him fucking cheap, man. The Steelers were so desperate to get DB help, and that felt like they got kind of abused in that trade. It was terrible, man. Um, Finally, the Panthers did something right. Just happens to be on the off- offensive side of the ball when they fucked up on the defense, but that's fine. Makes you score more fantasy points when you're always trailing because your defense can't stop anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> not bad. Uh, I love it for Bryce. And to the, yeah, I'll probably flip some of these, right? Just from a portfolio aspect, when you get too many, it's like, okay. His yeah. value recovers. Especially when you get a little bit of a, like if a Deontay gives him a little bit of a bump because, like, all right, weapons aren't as terrible. Yeah, you take that, in, that value bump and you move off some. I mean, I'm not – shit. Like, it's a it's a major win for me if I can even get, like, mid-QB2 territory out of him. Sure. Right? From where he started, like, in the 20s, buying for 110s and 111s and 112s. You ain't getting a fucking quarterback in this draft class there. So, nah. huge – like, yes, I will probably try to flip some of them. But I do love it for him. Uh, I think he's super talented. You don't go number one overall without being somewhat talented in today's day and age now. 
can make that argument with Ryan Leaf and Jamarcus Russell back in the day, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I think he's 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 still very very talented. It was historically bad rookie year, but he did some nice things. He has some nice metrics, and to be honest, all he had was seventy seven year old Adam Thielen, and you watched him fucking cook early in the season. So for Deontay and Bryce, it's like sign me up man yeah Deontay can do uh, everything Adam Thielen can do but he's you know 50 years younger he's a, he's a, he separates uh I'd say to a to a high degree a little, a little better uh than did Thielen you, did did you see do you see he uh I saw a tweet too about Deontay Johnson it was one of his best seasons from a drop perspective we always give him shit for that but yeah I mean rel- now relative it wasn't hard to do because he had a lot of drops in his other years but yeah it was his only his only drops I believe came in the same game and it was a rain game and it was like on the first drive and then never again yep what up DJ hey DJ is one that you and I have both loved uh I tried to you know talk some sense into you at one point last year on the George Pickens thing I'm like because GP was going off while Deontay was out and I was like hey just wait till Deontay comes back and Mikey, I tell you what, the I tell you what, though, look at the whole picture, and uh, I tell you, even some wide receiver. Uh, there's been a lot of people that hated George Pickens for, for the last several years. Even they, even they're sure. coming around on uh, on GP now. So they you, were, you were trying to talk some sense into me, and I tell you, the only the only part that made me any type of not completely wrong on that was uh, the just monster game he gave you once in the playoffs. Uh, random as hell, right? That crazy. What did he get? Two touchdowns or something nuts? Yep. I mean, he he hadn't made my lineup, Mike, in a best ball, a couple of best ball leagues, in probably like seven weeks, and then all of a sudden, just thirty burger playoffs. But he struggled. Um, it'll be interesting to see with him as the one now. How this is going to go, right? I think it'll be fantastic. They do need another wide receiver, and I hope yeah. in the late part of the first round they draft Ad Mitchell. Mike, and now you have are two. We, are we are we on the same page, Mike? I said this in the chat. I don't know if you saw this in in Discord. I was like, listen, I'm I'm kind of going to call my shot here. I want a first round. I want a first round receiver for Steelers. I'm calling it. Like they bucked Let's the go. trend. I know Tomlin's never done it. It's been I think it's been since what? Antonio Holmes since they drafted yeah. one. Two thousand six. So we're talking almost twenty years ago. Super this Bowl year. hero. This year. Antonio Holmes. This year, man. That'd be sweet. I, I, that's kind of my Just my, put Adam right next one. to GP, right? Now you got you got the reunited of the Georgia guys, <laughs> the OG Georgia guys. And they both got similar play styles, man. Like if I gotta comp them. A.D. Mitchell's a lot like GP, man. Boomer bust, inconsistent as fuck. Here we go. But Let's put them next to each other. The, the one thing with GP, too, especially, is like he struggles sometimes to create the separation in routes, like where Deontay's yep. the opposite. Mike, but who's better? Who would you rather have throwing them the moon balls up to guys that, you know, don't necessarily separate all that well, right? With Danger Russ? Russ. Let's go. Let's go. Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's weld. <laughs> But I, I do think, Mike, it'll be interesting to see with Deontay early on. Like, they're so void of weapons in freaking Carolina that I could see uh, I could see him kind of eating this year. Can I get that on a T-shirt? Pittsburgh, let's weld. I, with Russ's face, please. Do. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we can we get AI to, like, actually have him do it, right? Like, please. Russ, let's weld. Instead of a helmet, he's wearing a welding mask. Pittsburgh country, let's weld. <laughs> let's weld. That's the oh, model. Shit. That's the champ for the year. Let's go. Um, all right. So super chats are caught up for now. Um, all right. Nailed it. Let's get to. We got we got some questions here. Mike, I got to check on something with my daughter real quick. I keep getting pinged. So you you take you take this for like literally a minute. All right. I got you, man. Go check on the baby. Twelve team super flex start nine half point PPR T Law Burrow Bijan H A N others slash Chase Pittman Devante. Dotson, Elijah Moore, RIP, Josh Downs, Darno Mooney, 102. So he would give HN and Devontae Smith for Alave in a 25 first. No. No, not in a start nine. I couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. Um, right, okay. So you're talking wide receivers. HN and Smith, Smith and Alave, they, you can cancel those two out. Who gives a shit, right? But start nine, like I want that, I want that running back, man. I know I'm not big on running backs, but at least want the upside of the running back in a start nine. Like I want some sort of hammer and uh, HN over the 25 first pretty easily for me. If it was, if you're saying like it's the 24 107, different conversation. 
different conversation for me. I'll take the pick. Like then you're fine. You equal, cross them out, whatever, Smitty, Alave, but uh, 107 over HN. But 25 first, unless you know that's a shitty team, you know, like Steve's in your league. Steve always sucks. If Steve always sucks and you want to bet against Steve, go for it. And you just ride the hero RB with Bijan and whatever other shit that you got. But Smitty, Alave, like the Alave piece just doesn't make me feel like I'm getting an upgrade. It's more lateral at best. And this is the shitty part, man. Got a vamp, and I don't get to hit it. But Mike did put in his, uh, did put in from his 10 team league into, let me pull this baby up for the warp. Give him a full answer on his question here. So what we got here? Mike Football, one, two, three. Look at that. I should change my name to Mike Football. Kind of like Johnny Football. All right, and it's Dynasty 24. Easy. First one that came up. All right, I'll pull it up here for you, 10-team league, Mike. All right, how we do? You gave it to us. Good. I said no to this question on the screen, and now I'm looking up Mike's 10-team Superflex. Oh, Okay. Warp. Put it in the chat. Well, should I put the, is it the last, one of the later comments here? Yeah, not too far up. All right, let's see. Oh, Pretty here we easy, go. too, because it just says Mike. Damn. Sorry for the late response. Username is MikeFootball123. Does it get better than that? No. And the league name. Dynasty2024. Wow. This is awesome. Mike, I'm loving what I'm hearing. <laughs> it's vanilla. Vanilla Mike. Listen, it's okay to be basic as long as you're the best at being basic, you know? Let's go win you what let's go win you a chip. All right, so running backs slightly over wide receivers, Adam. Uh quarterbacks though, surprisingly the number one historically for this. Okay. Thing. Was what was number one? Quarterbacks. Okay. Hmm. It's not as bad as we thought. But so this running is back sli- slightly this, over wide receivers. Is this that ten team? Yes, sir. Well, that's okay because if I remember right, he was stacked at the QB spot too, right? Yeah, he's already yeah. He, says he, he says he already has two elite QBs. Perfect. Now I'm but chasing. would you trade away now the 102 for one of those running backs? Um, how, how's the running back line to the wide receiver line? Let's talk that first. Just slightly above it. The the top four elite guys all beat out their counterparts. Uh, number five wide running back beats out number five wide receiver, but at six they merge. Hmm. And then they got to stay on top of each other for the rest of the way. And then when you get into RB3, wide receiver three territory, you see a separation where wide receivers went out, of course. Yeah. So, like, in 10-team, I think typically like when I think of a 12-team league, right, I'm kind of more comfortable just kind of having shitter running backs, uh, one one hero type, and then fill in the back end. 10-team, if I can get hammer running backs, I feel a little better about it because I'm just trying to really stack up my – it's a much more shallow format, so all the teams are going to be better. Right. Um, man, when I look at this running back line, it's like last year anyway was ahead of um, the receivers. Man. I, I think I'd be okay with it. I, I guess you got to really have the question with ho- how you feel about neighbors, frankly. Like if you think neighbors is going to be one of the top ten dynasty receivers and here to stay, like he's that talented, I might have a hard time doing this, Mike, because – like, if you believe Neighbors is that talented and that much of a difference maker, he's not like, let's say, more like Garrett Wilson or Chris Olave, where he's going to need a good situation. He's going to end up running this league. But I think one for one right now, if you feel really good about a guy like Bijan or Gibbs in a new situation, I'm I'm okay making this trade. I think I'm okay doing it. I don't feel like you have to, um, I would say, right? Like, I feel like I'm okay if I end up staying. But if you if you feel good about your team and you think this is what's going to put you over the top, I'm okay with it. Where I'm okay with it. A little bit more 50-50 than I was before. Agreed with right. you. I'm, weird. I'm right think, there with I didn't you. Think qu- I didn't think quarterbacks would be as good as they were, and I didn't think wide receivers would hold as much <laughs> serve with the running back line. So yeah, knowing that you're trying to weigh you know, your choice probably of quarterback if somebody goes Marv, heaven forbid it's Marv, or neighbors, something along those lines. Like I'm a little more iffy, but yeah. if the rest of your roster is ready to rock and roll, fuck it, right? Get you the hammer running back. <clears throat> Just know that that's a not super safe investment long term. I think overall I would tell you I probably would hold with the receiver, but I'm okay with it. And I just don't – my only question to you, Mike, is that do you, do you think 
that you have to make this trade now. That's the only thing I have. I think about too. Like, do you have to make it yep. now? Right? Like, could you end up pivoting a top ten dynasty receiver into guys like this later? And then the other question too here for, for me, Mike. All of a sudden, if the quarterback line's that juicy, what do the elite quarterbacks trade for? Like, what does Caleb trade for? Like, what does uh, Jaden Daniels trade for? And does that also all of a sudden make it a conversation too? Right? Like, are you maybe right. you take it? I know hoarding is tough, but in ten team, Mike, it basically means the mid the mid quarterbacks you can't really trade. But the high end ones typically do have a market when the warp is like this. So. Just just something to think about. Do you have to make the trade now, I guess, would be the main question that I ask you. If you think it, the answer to that is yes, and this is your window that you can actually go grab a guy like that, you want to do it, fine. I'm with Mike. I'm more 50-50. Gotcha. Yep. Let's see. Uh, Six-point passing touchdown minus four picks. Oh, that is pretty high for the picks. Shitty quarterbacks get punished. Yep. Hard. Very, very punished. Um, very punished. All right, let's take a look at some other questions. Mike, I think that's where I'm at. I'm 50-50. I probably lean just in a, in a vacuum. I lean the receiver, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm okay if you, want, if you want to make that pivot. Yep, me too. Let's see. Anything else? Here we got Michael. What else do you think? Matt Dennis is here. Um, just joining. Sorry, I'm late. LOL, not sure what you guys already said. What free agent had the biggest rise in Dynasty and the biggest fall? Okay. Ooh. Now, here's the question that I have about the question. What, did, are we asking, did what player was the most positively affected from free agency or what actual free agent? That's a good one. I think, I think, you, could one. Probably give a, I think you could probably give a different answer for both. Yes, you could. Let's go ahead Definitely. and give Let's go ahead and answer both then. What the hell? You know, biggest what riser, biggest fall on both. What free agent player, biggest riser? Yeah. Um, Let's talk through this. I, there's a, there's a lot to get through in free agency. Honestly, Th- this was the most ridiculous free agency period that I can recall in a long time. Man, she didn't have a ton of like wide receiver movement that mattered, right? In no. the end, right. Calvin Ridley really biggest signing. We didn't get that till today. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with running back, and is a lot of people wrote this guy off for dead, but the fucking team he went to. Is like at least for a one year window, like on your contenders, Derek fucking Henry on the Ravens, baby. Interesting. All right, let's pull Let this me go up. King man. Henry, man. Let's pull it I up. I can see King. I can see fucking King Henry just having a fourteen. Are, are you are you in on this like one last hurrah type feel? One last fucking hurrah. Lamar Jackson reigning MVP. Learned how to pass from the pocket. They got some weapons. Fuck. You upgrade Gus Edwards. And uh, Justice Hill to King fucking Henry in this offense. Now we can say Todd Munkin, right? We can say Todd Munkin. <laughs> Boy, I almost spit that out. Holy crap. Gotcha. I did not think Todd you were Munkin. going there. Now we can say Todd Munkin. Um, I'll, be, I'll say he this. He feels like a fucking Ravens running back too, don't he? What, what's crazy is, Mike, it feels like the Ravens have been going this um, – crusty old names like just chasing everything because jk Trashy. kept getting hurt right yeah but now it's like okay you know what we're not really going to pivot that far from this crusty path but let's get the best crusty path that we possibly can I, i'm interested to see mike if derrick henry has any gas and any any gas in the tank look out in this fucking offense i'm gonna fuck around and find out i already had a shit ton of shares from him from <clears throat> getting him last year but the thing about him i think that we saw this year especially and and you've heard this talked about and you've probably seen it at times but people talk all the time about how if you can get derrick henry early on before he really gets going head full head of steam he's not that scary but once you get him at full speed past the you know once he gets through the hole and he's coming at you that mountain of a man at, at his full look out like you're gonna need at least two dudes sometimes more to take him down in this Ravens offense, with as much as Lamar can run, the different options they have, I think he has a better chance to get to and through holes where he's that dangerous animal again. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. Him. I'll give you my biggest faller, free agent faller. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, F- from a fantasy. This is for this is free agents first. Yep, free agents. Biggest faller from a fantasy perspective is going to be Gabe Davis for me because you can write that fucking guy off into the abyss other than best ball leagues at this point. 
Okay. I don't want to see no goddamn Twitter threads from so-and-so content creator out there talking about, well, you know, he's actually kind of worth it, even though I disproved it last year in a giant thread and then got fucking trolled into the abyss, <laughs> which I promptly trolled back. D-Bro's with Let's us on this, guy. by the way. Uh, he thinks Henry's on you. 15 TD train, man. Let's go. Let's fucking roll. But Gabe Davis, you can write him off for fantasy purposes, right? Best ball leagues only. Takes a Zay Jones kind of roll, and that's about it. Yeah, I can get behind that. Um, he's, a, he's at least the third option, right? Zay? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, Gabe? Yeah. Gabe. I mean, yeah, I think – here's the thing I'm just kind of curious about. Like, I think overall, to your point, I think Gabe is a is a loser. But, like, I think T-Law's a, a fine quarterback to hit a guy like him deep, and he'll probably still be – I bet you when you look back, his relevance to fantasy, te- fantasy teams may not be that drastically different. But one thing I definitely think is true is that now, not only is he definitely assuredly boom or bust – but I don't think in this situation, to your point, like not that there was ever like a big Gabe Davis sell window, but I think like he's pretty cemented in this. He don't mean shit when you add him to trades anymore. Like he's pretty mm-hmm. dead from that perspective. So I definitely agree with the faller in, in, also, in value too, right? You you could also bury Devin Singletary if you want. Whatever little value he uh, resurrected last year towards the end of the season, right? You go, oh. You're the replacement for Saquon with a fucking terrible offensive line, terrible offense. Like, whoo, RIP, but Yeah, honestly, like, De- De- Devin Singletary was actually going to – it's interesting you went there. That, that was my biggest faller because Singletary was absolutely propped up by the situation, and we got to see, like, a different version of Devin Singletary than we ever did. Like, this Giants offense, like, take Saquon out of it the last several years and just think about how – abysmal that sounds now put in Devin Singletary yikes RIP Mm -hmm. man like I mean he's any running back on a 53 I mean he's still a starter but like like we saw how how many times when Saquon was out did we see these starters whoever they put in there just like who 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 gives a shit right just gross stat lines no one awful um the Devin Singletary signing made me interested in Eric Gray as just a fuck it (laughs) <laughs> that's what that's what Devin Singletary to the Giants did. It was like, well, I know this guy's fucking toast. <laughs> Stink. Maybe Eric Gray will show something. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe maybe, maybe not. Maybe uh maybe, maybe not. Maybe sometimes good, maybe sometimes, sometimes shit. shit. <laughs> Can I tell you, Mike, this one's not gonna be the the like it may not be as sexy as people wanna hear. They might want to hear a new name, a new situation. But for me the bet the free agency that I think his situation, given his like name, was very in flux, and I think being in a good situation makes him an elite scorer again for me. And I think Mike Evans just signing back with Tampa Bay, and Baker being there to me like just solidifies him as one of the best buys this off season. And I, I kind of think, all things considered, every type of range of outcome that he could have had, are there a few out there exist that maybe were better? I mean, I guess. Like theoretically, but overall, just securing the bag, being in Tampa where he's already comfortable, him and Baker have rapport. I, I think he's probably the biggest riser for me, honestly. Not not that there aren't other guys right. that rise, but like I just feel like Evans back with Tampa is phew, strap in, man. Let's go, let's go ride Mike Evans to a title again. Let's do it, man. I like that one. Uh, how about <laughs> ancillary pieces, right? Yeah, pieces yeah, that weren't good. actual free agents, but Drake biggest London. movers. Yeah, Drake Drizzy, Lemons. Drizzy. Is he is he the number one for you? No question. No question. <clears throat> Let me ask you: is it, for for you, like relative to we say we talk about riser, does he and Kyle Pitts kind of rise the same level? But you just don't give a shit about tight ends. Is that the reality of it? Or do you think that yeah, London's a uh, bigger riser than actually Pitts is? London's a bigger riser. Like he's got a bigger chance to be a difference maker in your fantasy leagues. Okay. All right. So, but that that that's what I'm basically saying is. You just don't care about the tight end position nearly as much as the receiver. So Correct. I, you, all right, got it. Cool. If, if Kyle Pitts hits, probably still doesn't matter for your fantasy <laughs> success all that much. If Drake London hits and gives you top five wide receiver numbers in twenty four, yeah, I mean, if he, even if he gives good. you, even if he gives you top ten, man, like we'll be, yeah, we'll be dialed in. The one thing I'm interested to see, Mike, if Kyle Pitt, if if I'm sorry, not Kyle Pitts, if Travis Kelsey. Doesn't continue to make this. Uh, what do we got? I know oh, someone's got to me not chat. to show both Cayman Jacks, but God, they're so good, man. Shout out Cayman Jack. You want to sponsor the shit show? 
Mike, put your pinky up. You know, really show about that thing. Pinky out. There you go. Yeah. See. Mm. Look at this guy. I, I do. I do miss. I do miss last week's uh, Garrison Brothers, Mike. You know, like that one was. It'll be back. I know, but Mike, you you were. Let me tell you something, buddy. When you when you single handedly, when we have a guest on, like shut down all the questions and just everyone's here watching. It's a it's a beautiful thing to see. See, next time we get D Bro on, I'll bust out the Garrison Brothers again. D Bro, you hear that? It sounds like we had to get you on before the draft, buddy. We're gonna have to make this. Uh, we're gonna have to make this happen, my friend. London, by the catching... way, too. L- London, I mean, I, 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 it's hard to argue for a, for another person. By the way, than, than London, I, I am, mean, he's huge. He's I am there. swamped with the amount of content and everything South Harmon does. Um, you know, and I have very few podcasts that are in my rotation. But I got to give a shout out to D Bro, man. His podcast he does with Thor is fucking phenomenal it's a must listen for me every it's week it's fantastic now, i don't always agree with what they're saying but i fucking listen like a hawk man like that fucker mike. minute it comes out it's on like i mean let's call it what it is it, if you listen to us there's no even if you listen and you really like it there's no way you agree with every fucking thing we say it's just impossible so we gotta right? get we gotta get the dream scenario right we need the fatal four-way oh, thor the atm d bro and the mcnutted you tell me what time, what place, when, where. I mean, I'll just I'll clear the schedule. I don't care Fucking what it looks say like. Say less, bud. Just sign um, me up, man. I bet if, Thor's a good time. Uh, I bet he just sounds like he's a good time. Like he'd fit right in. Yeah, I mean, you got that name Thor too, and then you kind of you kind of deliver. It's like, oh, fuck all right, yeah. yeah. There's something right. about him. I love listening to him talk too. Like, like I'm so used to Derek, right? So no disrespect at all, Derek. But listening to Thor has been like a new thing for me. Debro says fuck his body it. is ready, and just say when. Oh, Mike, I'm ready too. <laughs> I can fucking listen to Thor just talk about water, like favorite flavor of water. <laughs> he would go into great analysis on it. Like, I, God I, damn, I, Thor. I believe that if you just told him, please talk about this, that he'd put a great piece of content out on it. You know, maybe not even have to prep for it. Just bam, right there on I the need, spot. I need the next. I need the next podcast between them two to be like, why Aquafina is the one one <laughs> bottle of water. <laughs> a, a, a number one pick. It's not near the top of ADP of Waters. Let's rock. Love All right, it. 44 votes on the Pittman London poll. Mike, I was going to tell you that I, uh, when I looked at 30, it was heavily uh, London. It was like 73, 25. He's a lot sexier, right? No shade to Michael Pittman, though. That's my dude. <clears throat> um, speaking of the Colts, you see, uh, you see Joe Flacco. Yeah, man. Let's a little go. backup insurance. You know? Yeah, a little Gardner Minshew, you know, without having to pay, right? Now, my question is, can you be comeback player of the year twice? Back-to-back seasons. <laughs> like, I don't know how that would work. I don't know how that would work. Like, you, you came, you were a comeback player of the year last year, but this year you really were comeback player of the year. Like, what would you have to do? You'd have to take over the league. Hey, Derek, do me a favor, too, with Thor. Ask him if he calls it tater tot casserole or tater tot hot dish. Oh, look, we got actually, we actually have Kyle Pitts in the chat, by the way. Um, yeah, Kyle Pitts just rocking here, man. And he, he wants to know where Fizzle is. Forget us. <laughs> where is Fizzle? <laughs> 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 that's Kyle awesome Pitts is a fizzle fan fizzle's a kyle pitts fan it's a spider-man well, gif like can, can i tell you why i think it's kyle pitts now as far as what by the letter of the law and the definition you, you're using i agree 100 percent with you for the record okay the reason i think kyle pitts is is because i i feel like kyle pitts without this like if, if you take if you don't give a really good quarterback upgrade I think people are starting to write Kyle Pitts off. I think his value had really dipped in tremendously as far as what people Wait, were really we, expecting. Do we start to see that David and Joku slide? Is that what you're I saying? I think it was. Yeah, I think it, I think we were seeing it. I think it was like you know we're on the we're on, we're on a uh, straight down roller coaster, right? Middle of Cedar <laughs> Point, and all of a sudden it <laughs> dips right back up. You know, like the you didn't we quite hit the more, full hill. We yeah. start to get more and more people like me with David and Joku. Before you broke out, being like, I'm just fucking done with this guy. Like, do your thing. Yeah, and I think that Kyle Pitts now, I, I'll put it like this. I don't think that he necessarily, um, it, he doesn't equate to what Drake London does in a value and dynasty, but I think from where he was perception-wise to where he is now, I think probably was the best, like the biggest gap and difference. And I think in perspective, like the way that we perceive him, I think is ultimately going to change drastically by the quarterback upgrade. That so yep. that's my, my take. Not, not that London isn't, by the way. Like, and to your point, if you're not, if you're talking about the tight end position, doesn't matter, and you don't 
who cares about the Kyle Pitts thing? It's definitely in London, in my opinion. There's some other ones too, though. Um, Mike, let me ask you overall for the Pittsburgh offense. What do you think about like Russ going there for one point two? I I like it. Not necessarily. I have my reservations still about George Pickens. Right, same reservations I have about Adonai Mitchell. Just just not fucking consistent enough. Right, two boomer busts. Separation Thank you, D issues, bro. Yada, yada. Pitts is gonna fuck in twenty twenty four. Nailed it. This is why we love Louie and Debo over here. Debo over here. <laughs> oh man, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who I'm gonna the die on Cayman I'm, Jacks. I'm not sure who the knee uh, is healthy, man. Big if that we're talking about here. I'm, Kyle again, Pitts. Oh, I, we're pretty far removed from the issue. I thought. I, yeah, but he looked like ass for a lot of the season. The first, the first half at least, maybe even longer. I thought he started yeah. to look a lot better later, but I get you. Um. I All right, so then check out the old keep trade cut. It's kind sorry, of I didn't mean to interrupt you. you. We kind of we kind of debro derailed the uh, the Pickens thing you were talking about. It, it it's good for their offense, right? Uh, no question about it. I've been kind of a Russ defender. Now it's funny to make fun of him, and you know, I did see somebody fucking steal. I put it on this goddamn show. They stole my meme, right? They put it on Twitter, and I was so mad at him. The the money ball where Billy Bean's talking to David Justice. <laughs> He's like. I'm the you know highest. You're paying me eight million dollars a year, man. So yeah, I am important. No, I ain't paying you eight million. The Yankees are paying you <laughs> eight million. Yep. That's what that's what they think about you. <laughs> so I I said that on the fucking show, and then I saw somebody fucking posted it as a meme on Twitter, and I was so sad. Like I didn't capitalize on the engagement, but hey, is man, what it is. Like, you're not gonna I'm bat a hundred percent, Mike. Come on. I mean, you know, I get I know. you though. I totally understand where you're coming from. Um. But, but you're not I, you're not really sold on Pickens yet. You're saying I'm not sold on Pickens, but it is good for their offense. Uh, as a Russ defender, he was fine last year. Uh, he actually had some good moments for fantasy purposes. He was completely mm-hmm. okay right up to the point he got benched. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that it's, was it's good bizarre. for their offense. Uh, I'm a Kenny Pickett defender too. Like I would have loved to see another year with uh, you know good weapons and a coach that knows how to coach offense. Not fucking Matt Canada, but it is what it is. Now sit your ass down on the bench. This is Russ's team. But I really like it for, like, Najee. I do like it for Najee. Arthur Smith, Najee, a good quarterback. I like it for their whole offense. Um, I agree. I, I kinda, Eric kind of put me to this, and I do kind of have a sneaking suspicion they're going to go back to the old Steeler <laughs> way, right? Maybe not be this spread-out air show. It's just going to be like we're going to fucking hammer the piss out of you and – you know, we're going to get up by two touchdowns and let TJ fucking Watt just eat. Mike, I mean, what – it it can I tell you as a Browns fan and someone that has paid way too much attention to the Steelers and what – this is – this feels very similar. Now, the, the defensive secondary, as you saw, they just made that trade for Deontay, is not anywhere near comparison-wise to what Seattle's was, okay? But just, mm-hmm. like, from a standpoint of how they approach the game and the, the way the Steelers want to approach the game, I think, it, it's – when you saw Russ at his best, that was where it was. I mean, they always talk about let Russ cook, but when was Russ at his best, really? It was run the football, defense, Marshawn Lynch. and Marshawn Lynch is in there, and let Marshawn Lynch go do his thing, right? I mean... Grabbing nuts. And then, and then, the and then, then you have, you know, you got Najee Harris, but you see Jalen Warren can get can be a very nice, uh, like, 1B in that offense. So I He's a good compliment. He really is. He, he's he, he's efficient as hell when he gets touches too. So, um, I I think it's a big upgrade for the Steelers' offense. At the time, you thought it was going to be a Deontay thing too. Like, think about it. Deontay was a top eight receiver for just to keep context. Last when Big Ben was washed. I mean, but since then yep. it's like <laughs> Kenny Pickett. You know, to your point, you got terrible offensive just situation he's in general. Shitty ass Rudolph. So he, I think he would have been good in either situation. But uh, I'll be interested to see what Pickens does. I think a guy like Pickens, the way that he can uh, win contested catches, uh, Russ is about as – honestly, just go through the league right now, Mike. Obviously, you could tell me there's you know Mahomes. There's other good, good guys. But in the mid-tier quarterbacks or lower, you can't tell me Russ isn't the best option for a, a player like that. For sure. For sure. I like him. It's good um, offense. Let me ask you this: What what do you think about with Henry signing in, in uh, Baltimore for the record? Because we, we're saying that we think there's some gas left. What do you think it does for the pass catchers, if anything? Does it does it help them? Do you think the offense as a whole is just going to be better? Listen, I didn't like the fact that they traded away Morgan Moses. 
today, right? No. Yep. I brought it up with Eric. Like right now, if you project their offensive line, you got two spots. You got Stanley and you got Linderbaum, and everybody else is who the fuck's playing. So it'd be interesting to see what they do in the draft to address it. They have some other needs, you know. Some mocks had receiver also going to Baltimore, so it'd be interesting to see if they add one. Maybe not in round one, but maybe in round sure. two. Right. I like it for Zay Flowers, man, and uh, Zay's still going to have the role. I'm not buying into this Rashad Bateman <laughs> shit again, though, so Derek, don't try to sell me on this. Mike, we're over 200. Just let that fucking the, uh, thing die. We're over 200 watching here uh, between Let's X and, and YouTube, so that's that's our our best viewership ever. Let's get it. Let the um, Bateman thing die. Harbaugh just won't, huh? Eh, no. Well, that was crazy. I, I was like, come on, man. We've Stop. seen too much of this. Just let it be. Don't do this. He's got big old cap on. Big yeah, old cap. Massive. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, who had the bigger Who had the bigger cap on? Harbaugh hyping up Bateman or Dan Campbell hyping up JMO? Oh, stop. <laughs> how, how do you pick a winner and a loser there they're both hey. cap i mean come on hey man this is the I, office man i'll corporate say harbaugh i'll say harbaugh for sure i'll say harbaugh corporate for sure. corporate needs you to find the difference in these two pictures they're the same picture <laughs> but i will say i could find a couple things in that bateman picture that are a little different than the jmo one like jmo hasn't quite uh been as disappointing as as long i think it's just one extra year and that you know they're gonna give dismiss to the the injury and all this stuff um There'll probably be a little bit of hope still for JMO somewhere out there. No, nobody in their right mind at all has any hope for Bateman anymore, right? Like, there's just no way. I hope Zay just comes back with vengeance too. Like, y'all think I fucking lost that playoff game? By the way, Watch. yeah, D, you and Debro are in lockstep. Debro, I'll say this about the pit thing. Uh, Mike and I are, what do you want to say? Ca- kind of calling our shot, but kind of like just playing around. Uh, I would love to see it. I'm calling my shot. I'm like first round receiver, first time ever for Tomlin. But fuck it. W- what we all know is they're going to draft one. Uh, this is a signature move they do. They get they move on from the other receiver and then they draft another one. Like it's just it's like clockwork. That's how we roll. Yeah, it's just uh, it's part of their DNA. Uh, any anything else you wanted to cover? Uh, if you got questions, drop them. Let us know. But Aaron Jones signing with the Vikings just to say fuck you to the Packers is the greatest thing I've ever well, seen in my life. That one too, Mike. It felt very um, like right after the Barkley thing with uh, going to Philly, and then T- you saw Tiki Barber, um, all that shit, right? Like, all right, yeah, let's let's throw a little more animosity in here. Let's get a little, let's get this whole running back position to just get mad. Like it was, it felt like it got very spiteful at that point too. It did. It was fantastic, though. I love it. And again, like Tajay Spears, RIP to your. Huh? Huh. What up, Corey? RIP. RIP to them Ty Chandler truthers. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, 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 Mike, honestly, to me, I think he still earns a role. Now, it's not going to be this, like, feature back that people were maybe hoping for. I don't think Ty Chandler was really ever realistically a full season feature back. But I think. In this offense, it could be decent. I I just don't know at this point what this offense looks like. Does anybody? It's we'll see. What's your take on the Vikings offense as a whole? I mean, we know I think Jefferson's going to eat no matter what. Oh, you want to talk about ancillary pieces that are losers? Justin Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson, Jordan <laughs> Addison. We are solely relying on them trading up for a rookie. Period. Otherwise, yeah. you're a Sam fucking Darnold away from just, oh, 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 please, God, no. I know Thor, Debro, they love J.J. McCarthy. They think it's great. I still have questions, right? You saw how fucking pissed off Justin Jefferson sometimes would get at Kirk. What do you think is going to happen with a rookie? Really what I want to see just to set the whole fucking world on fire, that hypothetical trade of T. Higgins. <laughs> to fucking Minnesota in return for Justin Jefferson, right? T. Higgins and picks, obviously, but sure. fucking make that happen. Put Chase and Jefferson back on the same team with Joe Burrow. Fucking while you're at it, go get Clyde Edwards away. Jeez. Let's bring LSU to Cincy. This this seems like some Madden, some just Madden shit. Like oh. fucking do it, man. It's the NFL. Let's get crazy. Well, the only thing about the NFL, I'll just say this about free agency as a whole. Now it felt insane. Because you had the Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, right? You had Russ going to Pittsburgh, and you had all, you, the running back position as a whole. Mike, look like Barkley, new situation. Jacobs, new situation. Henry, Pollard, Eckler, Swift, single like literally everybody switched teams at running back. But what do we have at receiver? 
Not at all. Nah, man. We ain't letting. We are not letting legit receivers go. Fair. Gabe Davis, Darnell Mooney. All right, y'all can go. You know, go and carry on. You can go play for Jacksonville. You, the this the receivers are the like the NFL really. I think in free agency told me Mike, like the tag went to Higgins, Pittman. You know, we're not letting you go. We're just giving you the bag. Evans, even at your old age, like we're just we're re upping. They they really told me that like you. We're, we're we're these are the gem of everything. This is where this is where we think our team's success is reliant on. Now, I don't think anybody is trading Jay like Jefferson away at this point. Um, even if their team sucks, like it would have to be something like seismic to move on from a guy like him. I think if they don't pay him thirty mil, please thirty three mil. I don't give a fuck. Make it <laughs> groundbreaking. What's what's currently isn't Tyreek making like thirty right? I don't think it's thirty. Is it not thirty? I was saying I'm like no. not not actually. Let's see. Hold on. I don't know what A V would be on that, but I thought maybe it was twenty something. Twenty five maybe. I wanna see just fucking insanity at that contract. Yeah, Tyreek's Tyreek's at thirty. Thirty annually. Holy mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, Devontae's at twenty eight. Yeah. Like I, I think that whatever Jefferson gets, no matter who it's from, is gonna really destroy that number. Like I think he's gonna be Closer to forty. Now I don't think he's gonna get forty, but he's gonna get something stupid, man. Like he's gonna fucking just destroy whatever the current cap is. It, it is the Vikings. No offense, to Thor. I just hate local teams, right? Packers <laughs> included, Bears included. <laughs> Fuck the I hate, North. You hate local teams. <laughs> I just do. The fucking Chiefs, right? St. Louis Rams when they're here. Don't really give a shit, right? I'm a Philly guy through and through, so I love to see them all miserable. Fuck them all, but. I'd also love to see, like, they can't trade up for for, for fucking J.J. McCarthy. They can't get their quarterback. Doesn't work out the way Vikings fans all want. They roll into the season with Sam Darnold, but their answer is fucking taking Bo Nix in round two. <laughs> Please, God, make that happen. No. Never asked for much, but make it happen. I want to see fucking 4.6 yard A dot fucking Bo Nix. And Justin Jefferson together, because I'm sure he'd just fucking kneecap him. First chance he got. See? And, 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 like, hey, man, so, I was open 20 yards downfield. Why did he throw the ball? I don't throw anything past five yards, buddy. Th- this is why we we will forever be known as the shit show and a couple of dummy. Like, just when, you know, the show's been go- – Mike's ready to just take everybody that's listening and yeah. tell you to go fuck them. Just fuck all of you. I want. I want to see mayhem. I want to see chaos for Dynasty. Uh, all right. Let me ask you this then. L- l- last thing I want to ask you um, on the free agency thing is there a? L- let me ask you. What, what do you think about Eckler for a second? We haven't really touched on him. We touched on pretty much all the other running backs that mattered. I think his is going to depend on who they get at quarterback. Whether it's May or Daniels. Right now, it looked like Daniels switched to the leader in the clubhouse. Fizzle's been pushing this. Makes sense. <laughs> doesn't make sense but if it's drake may i have some some hope for austin eckler right uh killed brian robinson right he he showed that he was competent catching passes but you don't sign eckler to not play him on third downs at least fair r.i.p that now you're back to a two down grinder workload at best and it is what it is for him but eckler hinges on whether it's may or whether it's jane daniels i can get behind possibly Drake May checking it down to fucking Austin Eckler in his rookie year. Yeah, it ain't fucking happen if it's Jaden Daniels. Yeah, well, Jaden da- Jaden Daniels take off and fucking run. He's running. Well, J- Jaden Daniels, I think, like right now, I think for me, actually, it's funny. Uh, Debro has in here X e- X dead. Like I think right now he's that's the perception, <laughs> and I don't know that he's a hundred percent dead, but he's not exciting at all. If you gave him an option at quarterback that could check it down a little bit. Like in best ball leagues, especially, I might be a little more interested at cost. Um, but yeah, I think I think a guy that's more of a runner, like Jaden Daniels, Eck is dead. Yes, like I'm, I'm out. Like I don't want it. I don't. I don't think there's any upside there. I, I, I don't think the offense will be that great as a whole, and the like efficient touches aren't going to go to him. He's probably not getting goal line work ahead of B Rob. So, not to Listen, mention Jaden Daniels might be running those touchdowns in. I think Jaden Daniels is awesome too. Like no knock against him, but. I'd also like to see the world burn and see Washington pass on the best quarterback fucking prospect in this draft in Drake May. So good for them. Fuck them in, in division rivals. Oh, Mike. Spicy. I, I think 
Mike has a, uh, how do I want to word this? Mike has an affinity. He has a, a real, like a special place in his heart. When, when things are getting <laughs> messy, Mike wants to insert himself right into the middle of it and, and just get loudest. Like, put some KY jelly all over him and just say, look at me. Like he just, you, you love, he loves controversy. Like you just get a, a bad situation where it, let me not even say bad, a polarizing situation where the community is very split. Like right now, Mike, I think is as split as I've ever heard anybody on Drake may. I have seen people, yep. many, multitudes of them basically say that they don't think he's an NFL quarterback. Yep. I get and you. and it, 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 I I didn't hear m- much of that for this whole uh, like current NFL season about like Drake May as a prospect. Not saying he couldn't end up being a bust, but I feel like that 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 narrative has gotten a lot louder lately. I mean, he's ten times the quarterback JJ McCarthy ever will be. So here we go. Look at this. D bro is uh. See, this is why we need to have the fatal four way. D bro would be just not letting Mike get a fucking word in. By the way, those are all separate knots for the record. <laughs> it's not the same one over and over again. Those are and all two ones. I, I, I like May, but uh, he is not the best quarterback. I mean, I agree, he's not the best quarterback prospect in the class, but I, I think the hate's definitely getting to an interesting place. Uh, I'll say that. If it wasn't for D bro and Thor and NFL guys and the drum beat that you're hearing for JJ McCarthy. He wouldn't have a first round quarterback grade for me. Fizzle says it well. <laughs> I love this. Uh, just he, being honest, man. We sat down and what? watched the film. If, if it wasn't for the drumbeat <clears throat> mm-hmm. of J.J. Oh, McCarthy's oh, rise, gotcha. mm-hmm. if it wasn't for D Bro and it wasn't for Thor, like I trust their opinion. I do. So I have to reflect that in my ranks, right? Yeah. But I'm just telling you, like, if you told me, Mike, you don't get any outside appearance ranked quarterbacks, this would not be a first round quarterback. The four fucking games we sat down and watched with him last Friday night in the Discord, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I like it's that. the whole so. Michigan team, Nathan, too, because Blake Corum right. looked like ass. Roman Wilson looked like ass. The only one that stood out to me was Colston Loveland, tight end two of 2025. Book it. Tight end mm. one's always going to be Luke Lachey, by the way. I'll give you a little primer. Trip Crown asked this question. Uh, are we sketched out by Bowers not testing at all? I'm not, and I think – Nope. He, he, Mike, he's going to have – I think he'll end up destroying it uh, or having a pretty good performance at his uh, – he's going to do his the, pro day, right? The only thing I was sketched out about was the photo of their pro day today uh, at George's pro day. Uh-huh. And they had a, a Marius Mim standing next to him. And, like, it's like, fuck Bowers. I don't it's think like I saw kid. this. Oh, my God, a Marius Mims is a giant fucking human being, man. I know he is, he but I didn't Brock see the, I didn't see the picture. Like ran- Did he really? Brock Bowers, yeah, Brock Bowers what, he, he was 6'3", 240, something like that. Is he, what he, he's, what he he's, like the pro, he's like the new prototypical uh, tight end size. Like, he not, is. He not, is. Super, not super tall, but definitely good good size for a but move don't, tight don't end. But don't get it fucking twisted. If you're 6'3", 240, you're a big human, all right? Big human. I mean, like he's, that's Mims. basically me, right, by the way. Like, that's Amarius what, that's where Mims I'm at made him look like he's a fucking seventeen-year-old like journalist school reporter. To, to be fair, Amarius Mims is like not really—he's not like real life. He basically dwarfs anybody, right? He's just freaking massive. I have no issues with him not testing at all. He oh, Bowers is not doing pro day with a, has yeah, a hammy. He didn't okay. do his pro day today, hammy. So we we aren't going to get a, a RAS score for the kid, really. No, uh, he's going to do private workouts, so maybe he'll get a leak or something like. I'm actually kind of curious. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back and uh, like uh, you go through playerprofiler.com, right? And you kind of see like you know you want to see players' measurables and their metrics. Like for example, Dr- Drake London is the first one actually that's going to get me on this new little data wave I'm trying to do. Do you know that Drake London in there? Th- you'll you'll get a forty time for him, but he never ran one. Do you know that? Like where the fuck? Wh- where what what is this forty that we're using? And then how much are we adding to it? Is it is it a point five for this? Uh, you know. Yeah, where they pull it from, out of thin air. I I just am curious, like, what how how that happens, and then because what I want to see too is like uh, if that if that information matters, like you know when we if they put a RAS score out for Brock Bowers eventually based on private workouts, like how how many times do we have uh, the no no measurables for players? I, ultimately, I don't think for a guy like Brock Bowers it matters. I think he's too talented. Um, if he wasn't quite as talented, I think you could maybe say, all right, I I don't really know what to make of him. But um, Brock Bowers is the premier tight end prospect coming into the league that we've seen for a while. Uh, you know, Kyle Pitts type stuff. He's he's right. that dude in my opinion. 
Uh, the last thing I had, I had to look it up too because I was concerned maybe Drake London ran at his oh, wait. pro day. I got an article from NBC he, Sports. He did not run at his pro day, uh, Drake May. Yep, or uh, Drake London. It's or, a, I'm sorry, uh, Drake, for, May. Drake May. Drake former May. Former USC wide receiver Drake London did not run the 40 at his pro day workout, and he also did not run at the combine. Says he yeah. will not run before the draft. He did not run, and he he had a, remember he's coming off that ankle uh, injury, and. Um, I just I, it's funny because it's like uh it's long enough ago that I feel like people just forget about that actually. It is interesting though. It does make me question though when you look that stuff up sometimes just at quick glances like where the fuck did this forty come? Because <laughs> Mike, you know you know how you know how it came up for me is I I had forgotten about it too. But it, uh, when we were talking about Keon Coleman's time, I was like, well, what what a guy like Drake run it at? And then pulled up the time and I looked and then I saw that on player profile you'll see the uh, there's a big like exclamation type point thing in the upper right hand corner and you look at it and it basically says like he didn't run it but we pulled it from a, a prior it literally says from a prior uh running where was this who who timed it like i, I have a lot of questions <laughs> i have a lot of questions like a- was that like a training camp, you know, in college sometime, you know, when they have those workouts or whatever, they do some athletic tests? I don't have no, no D- DB, I know, yeah. They, they normally put the pro day in there, and then the pro day they put a point zero five correction. My, my, my only I question is, like, part, in yeah. this scenario, what? It, when is the last time he ran one? Are we, is this like the Sparks? Like, what is this? I, I just am curious. <laughs> and think about how much, uh, you remember when LSU and Jamar Chase and all those guys were coming out? <laughs> well, you didn't have the NFL combine, and the motherfuckers right. are juicing that was the, the shit out of them. That was the COVID year, yeah. What Racy McMath run like a four one nine or some shit? I don't even know what the fuck it was. But <laughs> Cody says uh, Ravens are releasing OBJ with post June first designation. Yeah, he he's been dead for a while. Let that one die, boys. Mike, I got bad news for you. Wherever he ends up, the 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 media, the NFL regular standard media is going to be. Put them all over your timeline, buddy. You know, just wait for it. Wait for it. Whatever he signs, I'm about as excited as Devonte Parker fucking. I like this from Trip Crown. I'm gonna start doing my own pro day private workouts. There you go. That's right. Get yourself a nice little business. You know. Well, at hey. the expo, you can put it on my player profiler page. I ran a four three five. Even if we add, and that's with the point oh five added in, he's really a four three. I'm a four three guy. Adam knows. He's seen these calves, these thighs. What do you think you te- what, what do you think you test best in right now? Like real shit. What I test best in? What yeah, of, of the the metrics they use um, for like the RAS. What do you think you test best in? Or or just combine. How about just combine in general? What do you think you just test best in? Just combine in general? Yeah. I would say my burst score would probably be off the chart. Think so? Okay. How about the bench? You, I was going no bench? Nah. Okay. Nah, those, got, those days are over. I got D cups at this point, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> That might be C's. They're still perky, but we're good. Here, but we're good. <laughs> we we almost got out of here clean. No, 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 no. Like I bet my speed score would be really good. DB loves a good speed score. I, I'd have a good speed score. Okay. You know, six foot, three seventeen, running a five two forty. Like my speed score would be good. It'd be like, look at that fucking big hog. Holy Molly go. shit! Remember when? Uh, what's his name? He he. Uh... Ran a really big dude this year. Why can I not think of his name? He ran a really good 40 for his size. Uh, defensive tackle. Why can I not think of the dude's name? Drive me crazy. Hey, no lie. In high school, senior year, I ran a 4.5. So if you want to adjust that up, point oh five. Four, I mean, five, if you, dad, if you four, ran five, a four, five. if you ran a four five five right now, I'd be uh, my guy. There would be no, there'd be no, <laughs> there would be no more excited human in the world than I would be if you ran a four. Dude, five, that was five. back. That was a hundred and some pounds ago, man. I was two fifteen, rocked up. Um, what was that? Damn it! Now I your boy could move. Saying. What about no broad jump? No, no, nothing like that. Vertical. I, I bet the vert would be all right. Which yeah. uh, I gave some shit on uh, America's game with Eric today. We were talking about Bucky Irvin and how fucking horrible it was. And the forties, whatever. Right? He ran in the four fives. He looked like a four five. Bucky, guy on Bucky. Film. Let's call it what it is. What we hope he shit the bed for us, man. In the combine. What really shit the bed for me was the fucking jumps because he had a twenty nine inch vertical and I. I'm standing on business here, Adam, and you know it. You got I that. Probably got, That's in your I bag. Got a, you, you're you're you at least you're at least in the range. You're saying like I'm gonna be like, far off from 29. Like I'm fat and out of shape, but you've seen me jump on a basketball court. Like I could probably get 29 inch vertical. I like I swear this. To God. I will say, Mike. You know, we could probably do a. We could get the vertical like a, a vertical test in the uh, in the gym. It, we can get it Excellent. in the gym. You can get that in the gym. You know, get the. 
get the contraption. I would. Pull it I up. would be fucking insufferable if I hit a thirty inch vertical. All right, you know what? We have to do it now. We have to get it in there. We have to get it in there. Just see where people are at. By the way, everyone has to sign a waiver. Um, we are not liable for any of the uh, the injuries oh, that shit, take man. place during this fucking this 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 uh, combine. As long as I'm not catching post corners from Felix Sharp, I'll be all right. That's when I tend to like. Damn, Bargustus, I feel like has not said anything, literally oh, for the entire thing. We're almost two hours in, and then all of a sudden. But I've been listening, you motherfuckers. Mike running a four or five in high school is why we don't trust him. <laughs> Fucking c- come to Canton, Bargustus. Line up. All right. You better ice up, son. Mike. Oh, shit. He says all love, too. <laughs> better ice up. Oh, my God. Listen, for the record, I, Mike, what he's talking about him doing in high school, he's a long time. Years removed from that. Look at the beard <laughs> and a long and a, a much different, um, you know, physical structure of his body at this point. I don't think he's uh, he's claiming to be running a four or five five. What'd you say you run? You think you run a five two right now? Maybe. Would Tavondre Sweat run? There It'd be go. slower than him. He's a world class athlete in shape. I'm drinking Actually, Cayman Jackson, pounded fifty millis. All right, let's not get it crazy here. Let's see what he did. What what was the official? Do we know? Was it five two? I thought it was something. So you're not running that. No, no. Five, 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 four, five. That's what was set the over under on. Five, four, five. Five, four, five. I, man, it's probably about right. Probably about right for no five, under. Five, four, five. Bar Gustus is literally t- crying, laughing now. Um, I, this is fantastic for me. I'm, no I'm cap though. It. In high school, I ran a four, five. I swear <clears throat> to God. I'm, I'm, Mike. I'm not. I'm telling you what the people are saying. I want to set up the cameras to do combine overlays. Let's do that. Hey, you're you're. We got you're the combine foot, for. We got the expo for a whole week. But go ahead. Sorry, you're, what? You're you're six foot. You know, fat body that you see here with D cups. At one point, could dunk in high school. No cap. I mean, that I I definitely believe. Like, my I, I've seen some of the guys I used to play with. Like they're they don't look anything like that they used to play. Like it just period. So. uh I'm, I can so, so, so funny story we'll bounce out of here on this one right but about athletic testing <laughs> Mike's, okay? Mike's gonna say here I'm gonna tell you guys how much of an athlete I was and then we're gonna bounce out of here <laughs> we are we're, we'll get this out to the world okay oh, so when Crip I was Crown says seven, you ain't running a sub 6 I think that's a challenge we need to get this on camera I'll, I'll record it as soon as I run a sub 6 I'm banning him to the shadow realm as, along with Xbox like alright sorry going. continue with your story I didn't mean to cut you off so when I was in seventh grade, I told my dad I wanted to dunk a basketball. So he had me doing all these calf exercises every fucking day, every day, right? Okay. You were doing I the calf on, raises, right? Stand on a two by four and watch fucking TRL and just lift yourself up with your toes over and over and over again. Get to high school, sophomore year, I finally dunk it. Anyways, all throughout high school, right? We hit the weight rooms for basketball, football, track, whatever. I never liked doing upper body shit. I didn't like my titties hurting. <laughs> Wasn't a fan, okay? So I never really focused on upper body shit. So the other guys are out there. We're like getting doing people to the expo, by like, the way, right now. Just everybody is unaware. Like, like getting they, Now you up. have to see this. I was a psychopath. I love squatting. I love doing leg press. I love getting on the calf machine. They have a, an official name for it. But you know the ones where you throw plates on the side. You got that thing that sits over your shoulders. Yeah. Do calf raises. Mm-hmm. I'd fucking max that thing out. Like we had to get longer <laughs> bars so I could put more weight on it. <laughs> became like a challenge right so we go oh, in boy. we go into freshman year of football in college okay and we have all the athletic tests and we're running the 40 we had to run a mile um got to push a blocking sled got timed and then we get into the weight room and they're doing your athletic testing to see where you are and then how you progress throughout the year so we get there they got all the fucking offense alignment in there doing squats right some of these guys squatting 400 450 I get up, coach is going like, hey, take some plates off. And I'm like, fuck that, put plates on. He's like, you can't squat that. I'm like, watch. So he puts 500 pounds on this motherfucker, right? Max squat, nail 500 pounds. I ended up doing two reps of it because I just wanted to show off, right? We go to leg press, same thing. Max fucking thing out, leg press. We get to the bench, right? I'm already in the group now with the fucking big ass hog mollies, the offense alignment, who like I was squatting and doing this shit. They moved me groups. We go to the bench press, and these motherfuckers got like 250, 275 on, you know, just banging out reps like crazy. 
you know, we're talking about 22 year old seniors. <laughs> They're fucking hammering out. Coach goes, all right, I seen you show out. Let's go. Let's put this up. And I'm like, you got to take plates off, man. He goes, what? I go, I go one plate each side. He's like, 135? Are you fucking kidding me, Crystal? Jesus Christ. And I'm like, it's going to be a struggle, too. I'm going to need a spotter, bro. <laughs> like, I, I didn't fucking struggling to do fucking 135 sets at him. Like, struggling. He's like, you got to be fucking kidding me. You're made of jello up top. Damn. <laughs> imagine imagine so if for, he saw you now. <laughs> well, so for the rest of the fucking season, man, that's what he called me jello top. Strength and condition. Coach just called me fucking jello top. Damn, that's some like back in what high school. Asshole. People are people are like you know, pretty impressionable. Damn, that's some uh, that's some like some head game stuff, man. Jello top, Jello top. That's a. Uh, I feel like for a day we could get you know the tear down king name changed to Jello top. That'd be that'd be pretty slack <laughs> in, in the in the Discord. You know, Jello top. Bring that one back. Uh, by the way, Bargusta says worth the price of admission. This is great advertisement for the expo. Nathan says that's what she said. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I listen, I think overall, right. So we just took the, the memory lane trip. I, I think that's definitely going to be like clip worthy. We can kind of throw yeah. this in like a, a big hype video, right? We'll kind of just the combine. You just kind of see certain setups. Maybe I'll set up. I'll we'll talk get, to Gary, we'll get, some. get some, get the setup kind of early so you can see it on a video. Then we'll see, then we'll see what the, the stuff is. We have to, we may have to live stream Mike crystal vertical set up we'll do the 40 we'll get a couple of the combine at, at, at canton be awesome jokes be on hilarious. Down, man. I'm, c- I'm coming home tomorrow i'm putting on fucking eye of the tiger and going to town <laughs> mike I, I feel like i'm you know in uh this is like the catalina wine mix you know but for me it's a win-win <laughs> fuck it let win-win. me let me have them <laughs> it's a win-win <laughs> you know what give it to him <laughs> oh shit i think that's oh, uh i think that's gonna be mike they're still 200 strong and at this point, we had Mike, the Mike Crystal, uh, you know, high school uh, workout plan going on. It's a happy is fucking hour. fantastic. Love it. A happy hour. I could probably keep going, but honestly, man, I got to do it. I got to do it. We, we got to cut this. I, th- I think at this point, go. nothing good is going to happen um, on on stream. We got to get out of here. It's that song, man. Closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Lights cut on. You get to see, you know, who you're really talking to all of a sudden, right? That, that last 10 minutes. Finish your whiskey or Cayman Jack. Shout out Cayman Jack. You know where to find me. Deal. Fitty Millie. Mm. Let's go. That's all we got. Uh, trip Crown. Loving it. Appreciate your trip. Uh, great show as always, Steve says. I'll tell you what, man. We'll be back here. Same time, same place next Wednesday. Uh, we won't have all the free agency chaos to discuss. But no. we'll be answering your questions. And when you're done asking questions, like always, we'll talk to you about something entertaining. Michael, Story time. I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let Mike do that. But uh, we'll see you back Story here same time, time same Jell-O place. Top. Jell-O Top. We'll be back next Wednesday. We're out of this thing. Love Peace. y'all. Peace.